episode. Thank you for checking out What's Up at Fun Factory Hobbies. This for the week ending Saturday, October 24th, 2020. Boy, howdy, do we have a scary amount of stuff to talk about. Look at this monstrous pile. Oh my goodness. Let's get to it, shall we? Uh, a couple items that I forgot to mention last week. We have the new shiny Satin Tower deck boxes from Ultra Pro, Amethyst, and Topaz. Uh, premium finish on those, so premium price, of course, but you guys seem to like them, so hey, cool. Um, we also mentioned last week that we were supposed to have received on Saturday a Kickstarter fulfillment. It came in uh, Tuesday, because FedEx. Battletech Clan Invasion box set uh, takes the narrative from the original starter box, or the current starter box, Game of Armor Combat, whatever, uh, which is set in 3039. This one takes it forward to 3050 with the return of the Children of Kerensky. Good stuff. Uh, five plastic battle mechs and a couple of sprues of uh, elementals, the clan power suit guys. Uh, good stuff. Excellent content. Long awaited for new plastic minis. Released this Tuesday, the you can see how big this box is. Curse of Strahd revamped. Oh, that name is clever because Strahd's a vampire. Revamped, get it? Yeah. Uh, so it takes the uh, Curse of Strahd module, which has already been in fifth edition for a couple of years now, and tweaks it, modifies it, has a whole bunch of cool stuff with it. The Taroka deck is now interweaved with the module, so it's kind of like a legacy module, depending on what Taroka cards come up. Affects the story arc. Neat. Premium price, but, you know, hey, what do you do? Uh, also, related, Curse of Strahd, Icons of the Realms pre-painted minis, Covens and Covenants pack, and the Legends of Barovia pack, two pre-painted mini packs from WizKids, uh, which relate to the Curse of Strahd, because, you know, good stuff. Also from WizKids, Seastead, it's a new uh, game set in the same world of Flotilla. In Seastead, you must build the infrastructure for humanity to thrive, but you can't do it alone. Can you strike a bargain with your rival while still, still, give, still giving yourself the upper hand? Words are hard. From Asmodee Companies, Lilibud, Mysterium Park. Mysterium's been out for a little while, and it's kind of relevant to this time of year, because uh, the uh, gist of the original Mysterium is you're in a mansion and a ghost is trying to give you clues. This one, same concept, except it's set in a... Uh, circus and its dark streets. Uh, so, ghostly stuff. Martha approves. In case you don't know who Martha is, come in and check out the sign on our bathroom door. Ticket to Ride Amsterdam is one of the, again, new quick play variants of Ticket to Ride. Uh, just covers a city rather than a whole continent, or in the case of Rails and Sails, the whole world. So, plays faster, but still gives you that great Ticket to Ride feel. And again, this one is set in Amsterdam. And from Z-Man Games, also an Asmodee imprint, Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. All the seasons of Pandemic Legacy are standalone, but they do form a cohesive story arc. You don't have to play Season 1 or 2 before or after Zero, but it takes place before that, 1962. Uh, and we're told this is going to be the last season of the Legacy pandemic stuff. Who knows? From Pandasaurus Games, the game, quick and easy, the game is a card game that's been out for a while. Uh, won numerous awards, including Spiel de Jahr, or at least it was a nominee, anyway. Uh, this is a new, faster version of it. Uh, takes a little bit of stuff from Uno, because it's got multiple colors, whereas the original version is all one, I think. Uh, but similar concept, cool, fast playing card game, inexpensive, great stocking stuffer for, you know, perhaps a holiday coming up in a couple of months. Speaking of which, from Steve Jackson Games, Munchkin, Tales of the Season, 
newest furry munchkin friends are back for the holidays with festive art by katie cook these cards are the perfect addition p-u-r-r -R, like cats uh to your munchkin tales game or any other munchkin game that needs a close dose of christmas magic and for you who don't care about holiday stuff munchkin Sorry, a little bit of glare there. Something fishy. School is in session. Either the dungeon has flooded or you took a very wrong turn somewhere because you don't remember the flaming hellscape being this damp. More munchkin cards. Because you need more munchkin cards. Back to Pandasaurus. <clears throat> Gods love dinosaurs. It's true, they do. Since the beginning of life on Earth, one thing has remained constant. The food chain. Good stuff. Pandasaur makes some great games. As we already mentioned, the game Quick and Easy. In fact, they have a number of award-winning games because I've been adding them to our website. I've got a tag for award win award winners, including Mensa Select titles. Uh, I've been entering Spiel winners and nominees this week, uh, and they've got several. Let's see. How about some cat stuff? Because you need more cat stuff. Cat. Tower from Renegade Game Studios. Uh, it's a stacking game featuring paper craft cats. Each turn you roll the die and stack cats from your hand based on the result. Be careful if any cats fall, you take them back. First player to stack all of their cats, aka running out of cards, wins. And Cat Rescue from Chronicle Books. Uh, let's see here. Work together to rescue cats in this easy to learn travel-friendly cooperative card game full of head-scritching puzzles and colossum fun. Oh, the word puns. Players must move cat cards from the street or foster homes into the shelter and then line up a series of matching cats to get them ready for adoption. Can you clear the shelter and find loving homes for all your feline friends? Oh, it warms the heart, doesn't it? Not sarcastic at all. Uh, back to WizKids. Ogre Zombie Paint Night Kit. So it's got the cool mini. And it comes with a brush and all these paints. Uh, they're little itty bitty pots, so it's not like you're going to build up your paint collection with this. But cool, fun activity, 20 bucks. And uh, each, you can, you and your friends get together. Well, you know, assuming that you're in your own circle and whatnot. Do the paint take. Uh, we also have the, this is season five of the paint night kit. We still have some of the season four Manticore paint night kits available. Cyberpunk Red Jumpstart Kit. This has been out for a few months, but I just noticed it uh, because somebody had asked about the Cyberpunk Red Core Rulebook, which is late in coming out. Uh, we will have that when it comes out, hopefully before the end of the year, perhaps first quarter of next year. They're working on it. Uh, it's been expanded uh, recently. They announced that because they've added so much content, and it costs more to produce, so it costs a little bit more to sell. Uh, it's going to be a $60 book instead of a $55 book. Whatevs. This is the basically the uh, beginner's box for that. Uh, I'm told it has some pretty cool content. But hey, now we have it. And if you want a little bit of cyberpunk married D&D, &D, we also have the Shadowrun beginner box and core rulebook for 6th edition. And Shadowrun's good stuff too. Um, let's see. Finally, new this week. Oh, a couple new things, a couple more. Warp's Edge is a solo series game from Winnegade Game Studios. Uh, multiple ways, let's see, you're a rookie pilot, stranded in the far reaches of space, you merge from hyperspace, find yourself at the doorstep of an enemy fleet. Go in with cannons blazing, so think Galaga or perhaps Space Invaders. Uh, you're no match for them. In the instant before you're blown up, the ship's experimental savior protocol warps you back to the start of the battle. The enemy fleet is in front of you again. The mothership looms in the distance, but your laser batteries have reset too. You have a second chance, and now you know what's coming. Uh, we have a demo copy of it. Tammy saw a solo play. Oh my gosh, and tore open to, into it. So uh, perhaps she can teach you how to play. Although I don't think she's read the whole rule book yet. But anyway, looks pretty cool. I thought it looked pretty cool too. But uh, as I was unpacking the box from our distributor, I noticed that I needed to leave for work 10 minutes prior to finishing that. Yep. Oh well. Um, yeah. Pokemon Champions Path has been super hot. This just came out Friday the 23rd. 
the Marnie Premium Collection. Uh, we've already sold half of our allocation of these, so if you want it, come and get it quick. Limit one per person. We did also receive a small allocation of set boosters for Magic Zendikar Rising. Uh, we've already sold most of those, so we're now at a limit of four packs per player, or per person. Um, so come and get them while you still can. We are out of draft boosters and can't get more at any time soon. We're told that bundles for Zendikar Rising should be coming in next week, but of course you can always tune into What's Up at Fun Factory Hobbies for the week ending Saturday, October 31st, you know, next Saturday, and uh, find out if they actually showed up. Although they're coming UPS, so they'll probably get here on time. Uh, let's see, what else we got? Yeah, Games Workshop stuff. Some more love for the Space Marines. Hammer Hall Bunker. And some more love for the Necrons. Ophidian Destroyers. And Satan Shard of the Void Dragon. This kit is just amazing. They did an, a specific article on warhammer-community.com about this model and all the amazing details in it. You should go check that out. Or, you know, just come by the model and paint it your darn self. So many boxes! Okay, we also got a box of goodies from our friends at Tabletop Tycoon. Included in this box were a number of collector's editions uh, which I'm guessing are Kickstarter versions, but I don't know. Everdell Collector's Edition. A uh, couple of the expansions in Collector's Edition. Or Everdell. Archmage Collector's Edition. Anomaly. Don't know what that's about, but it looks cool. The box is really gorgeous. Look at that neat artwork on there. Come check them out. That's what's up at Fun Factory Hobbies for this week. Again, tune in next week. Uh, I don't see a whole lot of new stuff coming in next week. Although, again, we're supposed to be getting magic bundles. Oh, uh, also this week we did get a huge restock of Dragon Shields, like almost 30 new well, not new, but replacement dragon shields may be new among them. I think we've had olive green before, but maybe not. But we do now, in any case. And we have lime green now, which I don't think we've had before. And a couple of new image sleeves as well with dragons on them because, you know, dragon shields. Uh, yeah, so that's it for Saturday, October 24th, the week ending. Tune in again next week on All Hallows Eve to see what other kind of spooky, monstrous things we've been up to. Thanks. Oh, uh, if you liked the video, if you found it useful, give us a like. And uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Because when we get to 100 subscriptions, then we can be YouTube.com slash channel slash Fun Factory Hobbies instead of YouTube.com slash channel slash whatever gobbledygook name they gave us. And I don't like sharing gobbledygook. So there you go. Thanks. See you next week. Bye-bye.